now, if you would, let me introduce you to my world record leg trap. Hey folks, do me a favor, practice CPR, catch, photo and release. The future of vision is truly in your hands. Hi everybody and welcome to today's show. Listen, I've got something really exciting for you tonight and I'm hoping you're paying close attention. If you have absolutely any type of respect for people who can't do what we do on a daily basis, then you need to stay with us tonight because the guest we've got coming on board is going to teach us a lot about what we take for granted, folks. I do myself and I know others do as well. But we're going to show you what it really is like to get a, a group involved that uh, can make a huge difference in the world out there. A huge, huge difference. So with that being said, hang on to your seats. We're about to go fishing, so just hang on. Hi everyone, Bob Nasekomer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal. And the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next ride, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. The summer sun never sets upon the Alaskan pike of the Yunoka, in the heart of breathtaking Alaska. Evenings will be shared reliving the battles of monster pike. The midnight sun trophy pike hunt is on aboard the 67-foot luxury houseboat, and you're in command. If you're not, you should be. Contact the Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Adventures by calling 800-440-7453 or email them at mstpa50 at gmail.com. Hi, everybody. You can interact with the show today or any of our shows we've got going in the future, and here's how you're going to do it. You're going to find us on Facebook at Fish and Sticks TV. You can private message us on Facebook if you do that on the site. And if you've pre-registered your phone number, you can also call into the show. You can email me at bobm at fishingsticks.com. That's bob.m at fishingsticks.com. And that'll get you in, too. We can at least pay attention to some of the contributions you have going for us at that point. Like I said, I've got somebody really exciting coming up, but before we get there, let me tell you a little bit about what she's done, and I'm going to do it in the form of video clip because this lady is absolutely magnificent. So sit back and enjoy this little piece, and then we'll bring on our guest for tonight. fishing and for a lot of the people who can't necessarily physically fish as well just the day out with the socialization with the people from fishing has no boundaries does wonders for these kids for everybody that comes here because otherwise they normally may not be able to get out and do these kinds of things so I don't know if anyone is aware of how priceless these events are. Hi, 
Hi, Kathy, and welcome to the show. How are you? I'm doing great, Bob. Thank you so much for inviting me on. No, young lady, it is our pleasure to have you on. The amount that I've learned about your your process and your organization since we've started putting this together is startling. It's absolutely startling. And we're going to go through a few of the things tonight, show some clips and some evidence of how the public is getting behind what you folks are doing and how you guys are contributing to going forward. But before we do that, let you tell the story about Fishing Has No Boundaries. Well, Fishing Has No Boundaries started more than 30 years ago. Our Hayward event will actually experience their 30th event next weekend on the 19th and 20th. Uh, back in 19... 19- uh, 86, uh, Bobby Kamick, a fishing guide off the Chippewa Flowage, um, talked to some of his friends after he experienced himself the ability and disability of getting in and out of a boat. And I guess as a fishing guide, if you can't get in your boat, that's kind of like your bread and butter. Uh, but what he did was open up the whole win- this whole. Um, horizon for people with disabilities to get a chance to go fishing by getting different volunteers and people just taking the time and giving their time and their pontoons and boats to take people who can't do it themselves out on the water. And I myself have been involved from the beginning and I have four daughters who have volunteered for all of those years and so it's a family event for us as well. Some of the clips that we're going to have tonight, um, they're slightly dated, um, so people are going to hear dates and what have you, and we don't want you running out thinking things are going to happen this weekend, but you just mentioned one event that is going to be happening this weekend, and that's critical, so we'll discuss that a little bit more, but we're going to be showing a lot of evidence of what's going on. This is compassion, literally, in a bundle is what this is. I I can't say this enough, and I can't say it with enough heart, how we take things for granted. I mean, we really do. I travel all over the world, and I'm blessed to be able to get in a boat and go fishing. I'm blessed to be able to cast and use both hands, stand on both feet. And we've got so many people out there, you know, wounded military, people who have been wounded in automobile accidents, people with born with, with, you know, with handicaps. And all of these people have, to some degree or another, a passion for the sport. And I think that's what really warms me up. The compassion that is is involved in what you guys do is just crazy. We, I personally take things for granted. We do it all. Every one of us that have both hands, both feet, all ten toes, ten fingers, eyesight, and the whole bunch of it. We, we know that on Saturday mornings we can get up and go fishing and we can do it whether the weather's good or bad. We don't have to depend on somebody. These folks don't have that, and you folks are opening up that gateway for them to go enjoy it. That is so true, Bob. And and one of and some of the the real key things is to remember that, you know, for some of them, it's the only time they get out all year to have an opportunity to go out for a boat ride, um, put a line in the water, and see a bobber go down. And for some, they may have, you know, had an accident or. Um, God forbid, you know, MS and ALS, they all are playing a part in our lives, in all of our lives. If you know someone who has experienced it, it affects your life as well. But you can give them that time because that person hasn't changed. They just can't do things the same way. Yeah, and they may, and, st- they may know, still have the passion for it. Time. Let, yeah. Let's talk a little bit because you guys are a nonprofit and you guys really depend on donations, both support and personnel, and uh, and donations in the form of a uh, product or sometimes cash. So let's talk a little bit about how somebody listening or watching today that may have interest in helping Fishing Has No Boundaries out, how do they go about doing it? Who do they contact? And go ahead and spit it all out for me. Okay, well, they would contact me here at the national office. Um, I can work with them in, you know, answering the questions that they may have. And it is true. Uh, as a nonprofit organization, um, in every, there are so many different organizations out there looking for funds that the funds are getting thinner and thinner. 
And, you know, when you start looking at the expenses, because we do what we can for all of our chapters, and I have 24 chapters right now active in, in 12 states. And for me to ship equipment back and forth, we cover the liability insurance. These are all major items in our support to our chapters. And this equipment is also used um, throughout our membership as well as, you know, giving them an opportunity if they can't get to our events to still get an opportunity to, to borrow a piece of equipment and try it out and see if it works for them. Do you have, do you have organizations that loan you equipment as well and I mean I know we're talking about some people who give it to you and you maintain it and and so on and so forth in ownership but do you have people who come to the events and say listen I've got XYZ product or, or rods and reels or things and lend them out for the day as well no not really um, our individual guides and our volunteers bring a lot of their own equipment and share it I couldn't but, help. Uh, from the, from a company standpoint, um, coming and, and sharing with us years ago, we did, but that's kind of um, not happened over the last few years, or actually for more than ten years. We haven't really seen much coming from the the different industries, which, in truth, you know, there a lot of their clients are really our clients as well. Exactly. I know when I was going through some of the video clips and some of the background on you folks, I couldn't help but notice that that we need people to be engaged and involved in what you're doing. And that means, folks, you listeners out there, you folks that are doing this right now, this is a social media that we're on right now. I want you to share this program. I want you to share it with your friends. I want it all the way across all the parallels you can imagine. Let's get Kathy's organization noticed in a level that has never been noticed before. There's so much emphasis on wounded vets these days and what can be done with them and for them. Well, there's so many more people out there that are categorically in the same situation that are everyday run of life, you know, next door neighbors for that matter. And the more people we can stimulate, the more people that see this, hear this, and and run with it then the better off everybody's going to be so do me a favor out there folks i want you to go and spread the word on this big time that being said we're going to take just a couple of seconds we're going to check in with some people who make our our uh, presence here possible and then we're going to come right back with kathy because we've got more exciting stuff coming with fishing has no brownies boundaries with kathy overman so we'll be right back bring her back oh hold on Hi everyone, Bob Mason over here. You know, I've got a place, a very, very special place in my heart. It's Osborne Bay. We've been excellent. Uh, Randy did a great job guiding service. Randy started taking us out when I was 10, and we've been catching big muskies ever since. The accommodations here are fantastic. Check out Century Lodge on Osborne Bay. Come on, bring her back. Oh, look at that. Oh, big fish. Big fish. Over here. That is a 50 fish. That's Folks, close. you're seeing it right now. My 100th just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. She ate that thing. Now we have uh, Kathy Overman with us. She is with Fishing Has No Boundaries. A uh, very delightful young lady. She's really put her time and energy in. She's gotten us some clips, some video clips that help identify what's going on. So if you would, let's just run to one of those real quick. In 1986, Bobby Kamick is one of our local fishing guides here on the flowage. Um, he had a, a leg injury, so he kind of experienced that it was hard to get in and out of his boat and that, you know, it was basically affecting his way of life. That was his employment. And um, then he found out, you know, after he experienced that, he had some of his clients who also had health issues and found issues. And so he brought a group of friends together after discussing it with several people that there was a need to, to get people with disabilities back on the water, especially like his, his past clients who used to fish all the time and then couldn't get there anymore. Some might have been a stroke victim or a car accident or something. Um, so by that experience they had an opportunity to open up fishing to people with disabilities.
One of the things that got me involved in this is that the organization is super. Anybody who wants to fish can come to a fishing has no boundaries and we'll figure out a way of getting them on a boat and fishing. That was Bobby's dream and uh, he guided on this same body of water for probably 25, 30 years and we are very, very fortunate that we had a person uh, who had the concern and the compassion for uh, other people. One man's idea and look what it's done now. Gosh, I remember one of the times that, that one young guy carried around that northern pike all day. He wouldn't let us clean it. And all he did was held it in his hands in front of him, showing everybody. I don't ever know what happened to that pike, but we never got to clean it. He probably took it home and probably still in bed somewhere. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff that makes it. People can walk away from here thinking that I can do things instead of I can't do things. Uh, I'm, uh, I guess I live by that philosophy and I've, I've seen that philosophy change people's lives. You that one? I think you did. How big is it? Big walleye, uh, nice walleye. I got one! My favorite story, this young man, who well, he's in his early 40s, paraplegic, came from Iowa, and he called me uh, one fall, he says, you know, he says, I was a recluse for years because of my accident. I wouldn't go out of the house. He says, I got coerced to come into your uh, event in Hayward. And he says, uh, he says, I want to tell you, he says, it changed my life. He says, I took my son to Canada fishing. And he says, I literally crawled down hills and up hills to get to the boats and stuff. He says, I never would have done it if it wasn't for us. It's all I need is something like that. It just changed my life. And it changed his, obviously, too. And that's what Fishing Has No Boundaries is all about. Giving them the chance, the opportunity that they may have never had before, or the opportunity again the following year to be on the water and catch fish, or at least make the attempt. I enjoy that a lot. I used to do a lot of fishing with my husband and that when he was alive. Sometimes the people without the disability uh, have a harder time uh, trying to function with us than we with them because they because they feel uncomfortable because they don't know how that disability uh, should be handled but at an event such as this uh, everyone works hand in hand and uh, I believe everybody comes away with a better uh, feeling. They come and thank us but they don't realize how much they've given us and I always struggle with trying to convey to them how much they mean to us. You have people coming out of institutions and you got people that own their own business. Uh, again, no one's ever been turned down. You know, if you're breathing, you can fish. Kathy, how many, uh, how many chapters are there now? We have 24 active chapters, with some of the chapters doing more than one event a year now. Um, it, also, we have some chapters that are also working with the local schools besides their event and the senior citizen homes. So what we're basically, we're out of the Midwest even though the show goes around the world. So in the Minnesota, Wisconsin area, North, South Dakota, Illinois, Iowa, where can, uh, where can people get involved? Madison, Milwaukee, uh, Fond du Lac, uh, down on Lake Holcomb, by Hudson, Eagle River, Hayward, that's our, our Wisconsin group. We have Devil's Lake in North Dakota. In Minnesota, we have Bemidji, Brainerd, Cottonwood, uh, over by Granite, uh, Granite City, which is St. Cloud. Um, then we also have uh, a couple chapters now in Illinois. Northern Illinois has been with us for a long time, um, but we have a new chapter down by Capital City, down by Springfield. Um, I have one in Colorado, uh, Ohio, Indiana, New York, Florida, Kansas. So That's to, and I have a new one just a few years now in Michigan as well. You're covering it's been some very active for us. Yeah, you're covering some geography. That's for sure, no doubt about that. 
can folks um, I know there's I know there's a couple of different ways to get a hold of you folks I'm gonna put up some information here that's right off your website so while we're talking they can log this information down this is how to get a hold of you personally and get a hold of fishing has no boundaries Inc um, and with that being said um, you've been with it for a really really long time and I know I've got a lot of friends in Madison Wisconsin and I hear a great deal about that and you hear a great deal about the Bemidji people up in uh, northern Minnesota they seem to be very active as well yes they are if somebody were to call you um, with sponsorship uh, uh, properties let's say um, I'm certain you'd be willing to take those calls uh, can you give them out a phone number Yes, I'd love to give our phone number. You call 1 800 243 3462 and just ask for Kathy. And that'll get them inside with you, won't it? Absolutely. Hey, folks, stay with us for a minute. Remember, you can interact with today's show. You can find us on Facebook with Fish and Sticks TV. You can private message us. I know we've got our hands full up here today doing what we're doing, but get those messages and comments to us. We appreciate it. And like I said earlier in the show, let's see if we can get thousands and thousands of people watching what we're doing tonight so we can help spread the word for Kathy Overman and Fishing Has No Boundaries. There. On your left, you can almost see it. One of the most magnificent sites on the planet, Lake Athabasca nestled just below the 60th parallel. Lake Athabasca hasn't changed in nearly a thousand years with its pristine shorelines, pure crystal clear water you can actually drink, and countless fish. Boy has she got fish that is for everyone willing to travel to Other Side River Lodge. From the magnificent world class northern pike that prowl these waters to the oldest and biggest lakers on the globe, Athabasca has it all. Other Side River Lodge caters to the true sportsman seeking an all-American plan guided package with three incredible meals a day and memories you won't find anywhere else. Records have been broken by guests at Other Side River Lodge in the past. You could be next. Book your dream trip of a lifetime to Other Side River Lodge, where fishing dreams do come true. Call Cliff or Stella toll-free at 1-877-922-0957. Kathy, you have um, you your organization actually puts together tournament events, so people and I say tournaments. I use the term loosely, but tournament events so people can come out and share camaraderie. Plus, they can compete. Is that true? Many of the chapters do run of uh, the largest fish or who got the the bat, the large mouth or small mouth bass. But each chapter is run independently to their area. We have one chapter who is actually taken on spear fishing on Lake Winnebago in February. Wow, that's aggressive. That's pretty well, chilly. We have like five participants, and that's about all they can handle at this time because it does take a large number of volunteers. We have well over 5,000 volunteers that come together across the country, and we take out about 1,000. 450 people throughout our events. Where is the where is your largest event that takes place? Well, the three largest ones that we have, and if they compete a little bit against each other, but we try not. We try to tell them they can't compete. <laughs> uh, one one is our, our Hayward event, which is the original event. Um, then we have our Bemidji, our Brainerd event. And then also our event in um, El Dorado, Kansas. Uh, and every, every so often, one of them takes the lead. So, and it's usually between 120 and 150. Wow. I, I noticed going through this stuff that the news media will get behind you folks. So if you don't mind, I'd like to share a couple of media clips because they tell the great story and these people really do a good job. Let's hang on here, folks, and just watch a little bit of this. A group of anglers brought some sunshine to people with disabilities on this cloudy day. WDAZ's Kenneth Chase tells us about a fishing tournament with a special cause. A lot of these individuals don't get the chance to go on the water. This is Shane Hamry's third year helping organize a fishing tournament for people with disabilities. He says he comes back each year because he enjoys seeing the smiles on their faces. Just makes you, makes a good feeling. You just, you want to see that again. 
About 45 people are participating in this weekend's Fishing Has No Boundaries tournament at the Spirit Lake Marina. Volunteers are donating their gear, boats, and time. Roberta Mitta battled her fear of the water in order to help out. I like to eat it, but I don't like to fish it. I'm a good self-advocacy person to help out other people. Mitta is one of several volunteers who believe in recreational fishing opportunities for all anglers with disabilities. Another volunteer, an ER nurse from Fargo, says the tournament gives people a self-esteem boost. I think too often there's a stigma against people with special needs and I think it really makes them feel like everybody else and that's what they should get to experience. Tomorrow, the group is expected to have a fish fry and hand out medals to the participants. Hamry says his reward is being able to create this experience year after year. And just being a fisherman who loves water, it's just great to be able to get somebody out there and experience the fishing water aspect of it. In Devil's Lake, I'm Kenneth Chase, WDAZ News. Not everyone has the same opportunities to get out on the water and fish. People afflicted with mental and or physical disabilities often need help in order to become anglers. And Fishing Has No Boundaries is a program meant to provide that opportunity. I visited with the region's local chapter over the weekend to learn more. As an organization, Fishing Has No Boundaries showcases 27 chapters nationally. And in northern Minnesota, where a variety of fish is there for anglers to find, disabled patrons have a chance to take part in the sport. The community understands what these folks want and need. The community steps up. It's so simple for you and I. We can go down in a very short time and be fishing at Lake Bemidji. We may not have a boat. We can be fishing off a dock or a pier. For them, they won't have that, that opportunity. They can't get to that dock or that pier. They wait all year. For those who can use it, the program is always in high demand. So much so, in fact, that some disabled anglers get turned away. It's hard to get enough pontoons. So uh, we had actually uh, the perfect amount of pontoons this year perfect number of anglers it, it clicked. Just per we couldn't have had a better setup this year. In the 27 years of the Northern Minnesota chapter's existence, many of those who have gone fishing say it's an experience they'll never forget. It was the greatest experience that I've ever went through. As a matter of fact, I've been fishing for almost, uh, well, 11 times maybe? I went out during my second time I caught this uh, 16 and a half pound walleye. To me, it's feeling like I've caught the biggest fish in a long time because it just makes me a lot really happy. I had to, well, go boating out for Lake Bemidji. That's the best part about fishing. One angler who went out on Lake Bemidji over the weekend must use a wheelchair to get around every day, but she refused to let that obstacle stop her from enjoying another day on the water. I've been here at least 25, 25 years. I'm hoping to start walking again and they're going to try to help me out and stuff when my foster care. Anglers in this event come from a wealth of backgrounds. But when they get out on the lake, that feeling of catching a fish is hard to beat. In Bemidji, Jackson Bruner, Lakeland News. The fish Boy, their, their determination is just off the charts. There's just no way for and buts about it. You can do is smile. <laughs> no, you certainly can. I, what I find so amazing, too, is they catch a perch or they catch a sunfish. I saw a sheephead. You see a number of things. Can you imagine that young person that caught that northern pike? They had to be literally coming out of their skin. It is so much fun to be with them, um, and and even just to to share a quiet time on the water. You know, they it's it's amazing what they hear and what they share. Like they'll hear the wind in the trees, and we've experienced that down here on the flowage. They had never heard something like that before. Yeah, they do pay attention to the details. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I, you folks don't start real early in the morning like we do at a professional muskie or a bass tournament or a walleye tournament. I'm sure you set yourself up on a little softer schedule. Um, many of the chapters do 7 and 8, but they usually start out with a flag ceremony and a gathering. Um, and one of the ways that some of the chapters work it is that they'll set uh, table numbers that match 
you know, like a, a number on a table that will match the boat or pontoon that they go with. So the guide finds them all together at one place. Now, do you guys have, so you, go ahead, I'm sorry. By doing that, it, it gets everyone connected because they may not know each other. This, they might just be meeting each other for the very first time when they get to that table. And then now they're going to meet their guide. The, in, the enthusiasm, the excitement, it's from the moment they get there till the moment they leave. I think it's critical right now and it's very important to let people know how valuable the guides are, the assistants that are coming out to help this all work. Um, I know when people give up that precious weekend time, again, we take it for granted, but when they roll up on their on their Saturday or their Sunday and they're out there working with these young folks, my hat's off to them. They're to be commended. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. One of the gentlemen that's highly uh, involved in Fishing Has No Boundaries, he and I crossed paths years ago at Madison and when I was speaking at one of the sports shows in Madison and his name is Dave Coons and Dave and I, like I said, we go back many, many, many years and I saved his interview for the last because Dave has been around your organization and you for a good number of years and he has he has suffered his own personal situation which makes this even more of an important story for him. If you don't mind, let's, uh, what do you say, Kathy, we listen to Dave Coons and then we'll uh, wrap this thing up and, uh, and I certainly want to make sure you're well recognized before we're done. So we listen to Dave? Yep, absolutely. All right, here's Dave Coons, folks. We're sitting here just across the street from the landing on the Chippewa Floridge, and we're talking with David Coons. And Bonjour. Bonjour, all right. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. You look wonderful here. Uh, tell me, David, you're involved with Fishing Has No Boundaries here in a number of ways. Tell us a little bit about uh, how you got involved with this whole um this uh, whole presentation here where we're taking out you know people from all over uh, the region here out on the lake today to fish tell us a little bit about it well about 24 years ago my uh, a really close friend of mine is a paraplegic and uh, he met the fellow who founded the event bobby Cambag, at a sports show down in madison and they invited us up here and i'm from the lacoudere reservation here and i uh, have a home on, on the lake here and we, uh, so I invited him to come up and stay with me, and we went to the first event ever. And after, after the very first event, there was for all of these, uh, for this entire organization. Uh, I, it was a life-changing experience for me. Actually. Were you in, were you in the wheelchair no, at that time? No, it was no. before you had your accident. Yes. Yeah, so I was an attendant for uh, other disabled persons, and then I started guiding for the events because I went out and I bought a. Uh, 1957 old 28 foot pontoon boat which I redesigned and rebuilt and have every year still have that same boat and for, uh, for been using it now for 23 years and taking lots and lots hundreds if not thousands of people out fishing avid, boat. avid fisherman since you're a young kid or yeah, oh. always yes yeah, so well I'm uh, well, they say it's all being, uh, being where I'm from fishing uh, on both sides of my family my mother and my father's side both uh, have been great fishermen. You're, you're Harold, uh, Harold from the uh, whitefish community. Yes. Yes. And my grandfather was a guide on, on Lake Monterey and some other lakes around there. And area. his name was? Uh, Louis Kuhn. Louis Kuhn. Yeah. And he's got his name to guide in some of the people here who uh, have taken record muskies out of the floor, if I remember right. That's right. And did, it, does, did he have a history with uh, the landing, formerly known as Herman's Landing, over there now owned by the sure. tribe? I'm really not sure because I, I never read anything about, about that. And I never had the opportunity because he passed away when I was about three. But I do remember it, which is amazing. But anyway, so uh, six years after the very first event, I had a real bad accident at work down in Milwaukee. You used to work on construction. Yes, I, was in, I did iron work. And, uh, so after, after that, I became a participant instantly. 
And you know, while I was laid up, I thought, well, there's a lot more in life that I can do to help out other people. Um, but fishing was what I really know how to do. Just like John Kennedy said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Well, I know how to fish. So I, so I thought, that's what I can do to help everyone. But helping disabled persons of all different types of disabilities is really a heartwarming uh, experience. But once, once you come to one of our events here, you know, because of uh, the camaraderie. Uh, How many boats you got? How many boats are going out there today? I saw them lined up along the shore of the pontoons. How many boats do you think are going out? Just over 100. Over 100 boats. All and, different types of boats, all different sizes. And they're going to have uh, handicapped uh, uh, individuals on there, yeah. mentally or physically um, handicapped people who tend not to get a lot of opportunities to go fishing because of their handicaps. That's right. A lot of people, it's one time a year that they have the experience the opportunity to get out with the same kind of love of fishing with your grandparents. Remember when you were real little, you got you were able to go out fishing with your grandmother, grandfather, or your uncles, uh, and uh, you know, how secure and how much love you felt at that time, but the knowledge of it. But uh, it really makes you feel like you're a part of something, but you're also well, being a part of something, just like us tri our, uh, tribal persons. Well, we're a part of America, but we're, we're part of a, our entire tribe, and I think that, is, that helps us all even become stronger persons individually, being, part of, being, being a part of something. What do you? What can you tell me about uh, some of the sponsors of this? Uh, you, you've had a chance to meet them. Who, who, who are they? Where do they come from? Well, I've met people from all over, uh, actually all over the world, who have helped try, who have tried to help and have fish with us. Oh boy, I, I don't know. Steve Forbes is one of them. Um, and Mark Adonacio, the owner of the birds. We got all kinds of wonderful people. Uh, uh, different foundations. And, and was Fishing Has No Boundaries started here on the Chippewa Falls? Right here, right here on the Chippewa Falls. Right across from Herman's Landing, which is now the landing, and our tribe is running it. It's a beautiful job. And, and Denny and his wife do a fantastic job with everything there. And it's all new cabins. It's really beautiful. If you want to come to a spot that you're going to really enjoy, come to, come to the landing because the fishing is fantastic. And the views, it will take you back hundreds of years in your mind. It will make you feel like you're really a part of nature. They're now expanding Fishing Has No Boundaries into other areas, yes, affiliate we have, programs? We have 11, in 11 different states, okay. we have 22 events, and that's growing. I was able to help start one uh, in Madison and Milwaukee, and uh, coming up in downtown Chicago, and outside of Portland, Oregon, on the Sun River, and the new one for next year in Elephant Butte, outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Albuquerque, New Mexico. Tell me a fish story. Oh boy. Uh, the one that got away? Oh, I've had a lot of those. Actually, I got a really good one. My friend Mark in the chair, he uh, won at one of our events here. He hooked into what we thought was the biggest fish anybody had ever caught. And this fish was going up and up. We couldn't pull it in. We couldn't pull it in. And every time we'd, we'd lift up on the pole and it'd flutter down just like this, and flutter up and flutter down. And I got to tell you, I've got that in my window today. And what it was, it was a great big piece of driftwood. We, uh, we filmed it. We took pictures of it. All of us, all of us reeled on it. We all really thought it was a great big fish. It was the funniest story. Not easy to fillet a piece of driftwood, is it? No, but, but, but I but I stained I stained it and slacked it, so it really is pretty. If <laughs> if someone out there uh, looks at this uh, video presentation and wants to help out in the future, they're inspired in some way about it. How do they get a hold of someone? Who would they talk to? They go to uh, Fishing Has No Boundaries. You can call the Hayward office uh, or go to fhnbinc.org. As where I'd, I'd suggest going to uh, on the web. But, uh, call the Hayward Chamber of Commerce if you're looking for a place to stay. But it is it's the most wonderful experience you can ever do is uh, volunteering for our organization or volunteer for any organization. It really helps you out individually. No matter what your problems is, 
are, you, you'll overcome them. I don't care what they are. Even if, even, you know, if you become a quadriplegic in a bad accident, don't worry about it because there's always something you can do to help out the world. Thanks for joining with us today, David. Appreciate it. Okay. I'll see you. Hey, Kathy. I got to tell you, we're gonna we're gonna get that contact information up one more time because I want people to know how to reach you. And before we go any further, I again, I want to bow to you, young lady. I want to say thank you very much for you taking the time and energy to get these folks involved in the game, get them out there, get them on the water, show them what life is about. I just cannot say enough or as many times as possible that I feel so fortunate that I can get up and go do what I want to do when I want to do it. And I feel so fortunate to know somebody like you that is willing to take the time and energy to see to it that others can do the same. Thank you so much, Bob. And just to kind of give you one other little tidbit on the picture that I, I sent you of myself and you see Steamboat Willie. He's there not just as Steamboat Willie. He was there as a prop to help with a troubleshooting. Uh, I did an Internet connection with a family in Indiana. And so I have to find all the avenues I can to help people. And it works. And I just hope that people will consider becoming members of our national organization because we need your support to keep continuing what we have been doing for 30 years. Rattle off all that contact info, the 800 number again. Let's get it out there. And, folks, I'm telling you, this is a challenge. I want to see thousands and thousands of views on this. I want to see it shared. I want to see it shared, spread. I want it going on the other websites, and I want it going in other venues and social media. Let's make this organization as visible and as proud as we possibly can. Give them that information, Kathy. Our number is 1-800-243-3462. And our other number is 715-634-3185. And again, my name is Kathy. You can find our website at www.fhnbinc.org. Kathy, I cannot, again, I cannot say enough good about you. Kathy Overman, folks, she is the spearhead of Fishing Has No Boundaries. Get in touch with her if you see her at a sports show or you read an article about her. Just remember she was here on Fish and Sticks TV telling a little bit more about her story. Kathy, thank you very much, and I hope we can talk down the road again. Thanks again, Bob. All righty, young Bye, lady. Bye, everyone. Yes, you have a great evening. Folks, like I said, thank you. Thank you very much. You can interact with today's show. We're about to go into school, folks. We're going into session right now. We're going to start talking about the technical side of what's going on in fishing. We've got some great stuff for you. I also want to remind you that coming up in the shows in the future, Scotty Peterson's coming on with us. He is literally a genius when it comes to Minn Kota and Hummingbird. Uh, there's other brands as well, but he understands the electronics world to the nth degree. So let's take a couple of seconds and catch up on some of the people we need to say hi to. And then we'll be right back as class goes into session. Hi everyone, Bob Nasekomer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal. And the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next rod, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Oh, look at that. Oh, big fish. Big fish. Is that over here? That is a 50 fish. Folks, you're seeing it right now. My 100 just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. She ate that thing. All right, let's welcome ourselves and you to the classroom setting, folks. We're going to be doing this on a weekly basis. We're going to take some of the elements and things and break them down so people can better understand it. There's a word in the English language called anthropomorphic, and before we're done with this, everybody is going to understand exactly what that means. 
We're going to be uh, we're going to be talking about subject matters uh, including walleye, northern muskies, bass. We're going to get into peacock bass in Brazil. If we can get some of our folks across the pond talking about some of that European pike fishing or some of the big cat fishing in Italy, we're going to cover it all. We're here to learn each and every one of us. There is no if ands or buts about it. I mentioned anthropomorphic folk is attributing a human form or other characteristics to anything other than a human being. This means you have to think in relative terms. We're not going to go into real deep depth with this tonight, but we are going to be going into it in the future. Tonight we're going to focus on one single element. We're going to focus on the elements that people have to deal with. The environmental elements. We're going to be talking a little bit about forage. No, not we're going to talk about it. We're going to show you what's going on. Lake classifications. How do they play into your decision making process? Is a deep lake better than a shallow lake? What structural elements do you work with? Are you working with weeds, muck, rock, rock reefs? What are you working with? Islands, island clusters. Is there current? What's the clarity? We're going to be talking about all of these things. And one of the most important things that I think you'd be talking about is temperature. Remember, we've got a cold-blooded creature here. That cold-blooded creature is totally dependent on its outside environment, the environment that encompasses its body. It will set up its life, it'll set up its daily schedule, and it'll set up where you need to look for these fish. Fishing pressure is obviously a big part of what we have to deal with. Even on the Canadian Shield, you know a lot of people have said in the past that, oh, you get to fish the Canadian Shield, there's nobody up there. Let me tell you something about the Canadian Shield. Canadian Shield is huge. That when I'm talking about the shield, I'm talking about Lake of the Woods in particular. There's other shield waters as well, but they are very big. And yes, there are places where you can get away from people. But in order to know where those places are and how to find them, you have to understand all of these elements that we're going to be teaching in the classroom as we go forward. Bar barometric pressure, what does it really mean? How does it affect the fish? What does it do to you as an angler? These are all key elements. Angling pressure, as we said, it is part of fishing pressure. Lake size, like we said, does the lake classification, does the depth of structure elements have a part? Absolutely they do. And preferred water temps, that is the absolute number one thing we're going to play with. Let me, let me tell you a little bit about what's, uh, what's really in the back of my mind because quite frankly, I had an opportunity to fish with a young man a few years ago. And we were up on Lake of the Woods in one of those situations where you book the trip. It's the second week of August. You expect everything to be 100 degrees at least. I mean, you don't expect what we ran into. We ran into some of the coldest conditions on the planet. We're talking about where you could virtually put on long underwear and virtually a snowmobile suit in the morning. We're talking morning water temperatures or air temperatures in the 40s, knocking our water temperature down and really messing us up. So consequently, we didn't get the trip we wanted. And you know, he brought his wife up, which is something that we, we don't have a problem with. We actually invite the women to come, but the, he, they need to know, as she did, that if we hit a tough bite, it's probably not going to be your chance to get in the boat. And she was okay with that. But Tim and I, we fought. I'm telling you, we fought hard and long. We were in there working hard. Our water temps plummeted the day we got in there. And they didn't rebound until the last day, the day we were ready to leave. One, The last evening we were out, we pulled up on a spot. And it took about maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes on this weed bed. And we started to understand that the fish are here and maybe we can catch them. The weather forecast for us was, was good conditions coming in the sense that it was the first warming trend that had been in place for an entire week. And it was going to give us an opportunity to take a crack at them. So we decided to stay over one night, one night, and see what happens. So what I'm going to do for you now is we're going to walk you through the elements that took place. I want you to pay attention. There's a lot of detail in this thing. It isn't something I want you to gloss over. I want you to really watch what's going on because there are things that we're doing in here, the nuances of what we do and how it works. Before we get into it though, let's show you that underwater structure that these fish were in because quite frankly, it was magic. When we pulled up to the spot and first started fishing it on that first warm evening, I couldn't help but notice that there was small bait fish all over the surface. 
these things were they were breaking the water and they weren't being chased necessarily by the predator we were chasing they were being chased by what our predator was chasing when you have activity like that in a weed bed after a super big cold front chances are pretty good the entire ecosystem is coming into play and if you're watching what's going on if you're paying attention to these details you can start to unravel some of the mysteries the weed bed that we had chosen was a thick cabbage bed it had really probably 15 20 different minnow schools that were in it that were you could see them they were like nervous water and then they would bust and then they would calm back down again and then they would bust that gave me an indicator that we had a smaller predator that was in there pushing those minnows around like i said and as soon as you have forage in place like that especially in a cold front situation chances are pretty good you're going to have what you want to go with it and folks we had what we wanted to go with it we had muskies stay with her you got a muskie or a pike i'm not sure yet not fighting like a muskie might be though like i said tim pike was up with us he was from down south west That's virginia musky. i believe Made like a that. long trip to get up Boy, here, never and I feel up, so sorry that he had to deal with the cold weather, but we did put it together on the last day. This is nothing but raw Better? determination. No, I believe, I believe we'll do all right. Unless you want to, I believe. That's ready. No, I believe we can get it. I believe we can get it, Bob. Okay, be careful. I got a Beckman in my hand, so. <laughs> You got a Beckman in your hand and I ain't got no Don't hook get in hooked. mine. So. Don't get hooked. So. Yeah, we might need your pliers on this. Oh, that's a nice one. Nice fish, huh? There she goes. <laughs> there she goes. Good job, big guy. Think that's the same one that followed you? No, I don't believe. There we go. Oh. <laughs> what did we do right last night? <laughs> man, oh man. Okay, I'm going to have you slide it out, pop those imagey hooks out. Yes, man, this weed bed is just plumb <laughs> full of fish right now. There are fish all over in this weed bed. How's she look down in there? Okay. She's not, she not liking me though, is she? <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Needed that little help, huh? I'll see her real quick. We'll set her back real quick. I'd say 42, somewhere in there maybe, mm -hmm. 42, 43. Yeah. You want to put on a spinner bait? Oh, probably. There <laughs> <laughs> oh. she goes. I 
I think uh, I think what I'm gonna do here, Tim. I got this. I got this one. Nope, take this one. Oh. There's something about the spinnerbait right now that they're liking. Oh. I'll throw a different color. Here you go. <laughs> I'm folks gonna give uh. him my M and G. This is what this is what these big fish have been eating right here. Again, we bar it, we put little bars on it to give it a smallmouth representation in the water. Yeah. When it swims through the water, it's an awesome, awesome looking bait. And it's a real simple thing to do. I'm not gonna tell you how to do it, but it's a real simple thing to do. <laughs> I'm kidding you. Take your Sharpie pen, sit on the dock before you leave, put the bars where you want them, and they'll stay there for most of the day. You might have to touch it up again as things move forward. You want this one, Tim? Yeah, yeah, that'll do. That one or that white one, don't really matter. There you go. You want the white one or that one? Yeah, we'll go with this one. Go with that one. I think so too. We're going to comb our way back across this thing. You can see I've got the white fish one that Tim was just talking about. And I've done the same thing with it. This is what it looks like before it goes in the water. But really, that small mouth color that he's throwing right there, that's my favorite up here on Lake of the Woods. I go to other lakes, I like other colors. And there are other parts of the lake that I like other colors. But right here, I like that color right there, small mouth. Come on, eat it, eat it. Gonna need a net, gonna need a net. She's gonna jump. Okay, you want me to come up front or you want me to stay? No, I'm gonna come back to you. Okay. This is the 45, 46. Now, that's a pretty good fish. Hang tight, hang tight, hang tight. I'll bring her around. It's a good fish. Okay, coming around. We got her. Just leave her in the water. Good shot. Yes! <laughs> keep her up. Keep her up. Keep the net up. <laughs> oh, oh. Folks, there's still a bigger, bigger fish underneath this boat right now. A bigger fish. This fish right here is that's 48, 49 inches. Yes. Oh, cool. She come up behind it. She sashayed behind it the first time, and I thought, yeah, eat it, eat it, eat it. She didn't do it, and then she turned around. She came back and ate the second time. Let me get the uh, hook cutters. I'll cut some hooks real quick. Oh, pretty nice fish. Oh, she's a beauty. Yeah. Now you're laying there for me. Thank you. If I get these out of here, then I'm safe. Yeah. You want to see her quick? <laughs> she says, no, maybe not. <laughs> Come here, girl. They got such powerful, powerful jaws. This is a good fish. Oh, goodness. Yes. <laughs> this is what we came here for. 
Absolutely, and there's a bigger one underneath this boat right now. Folks, it has been absolutely miserable. Tim's put up with some of the wildest weather you can imagine, from super storms to bright sunny conditions, but we got in here, and there's another one here. I'm gonna get her back real quick. You gonna take a still there? Sure. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna get her back. Yes, indeed. Oh. Oh. Uh, okay. This fish is big. Forty-nine. Forty-nine. Not a five-o, but a nice fish. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at her. Forty-nine incher. Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, forty-nine's an inch short of fifty in my book. So should we try to find a fifty? Let's go for it. Let's go. <laughs> Folks, we've got a really, really big weed bed. It's about probably 120, 130 yards long, 35, 40 yards wide. Good cabbage in it. We've just come through this. We've had two fish up in here. We got a 49. There's another fish that's in there. It's about maybe 51 to 52 inch class fish. Truth of the matter is, is we pulled off it for about 15, 20 minutes. We sat down, had a drink of water. Now we're coming back in to see if we can probe this. I'm going to probe deeper with an m and spinner bait. I've got one barred up that looks like a smallmouth. It's, an, it's a forage up here that the fish really respond to. Tim, on the other hand, is going to be throwing the lure that, that brought this big fish up on two different occasions. It's called an optimum buzz bait. It's the optimum swim bait with buzzer blades that they've built on top of it. It's a pretty cool deal. There's a fish. I have no idea what it is. Don't want to come up. That's a good sign. Oh man, I snag a turtle or what? Where's this fish at? It's a good one. Oh, yes. Oh. You're going to need the net. I got it. <laughs> Hang on. Come around. Oh. Okay, I'm going to get one hook. I'm going to bring her around, okay? okay? Okay. Oh, that's way over 50. Yes! Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes! <laughs> That's a way over face. 50! <laughs> yes! Oh, there you man! Go, <laughs> oh, so cool, so cool! I'm just ringing back that spinnerbait, that m and so slow, just slow rolling that spinnerbait. Dun, 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 and go, whoa, she just stopped me. I had no idea what this fish was. Yes! <laughs> Holy smokes, Rocky. I'm shaking, let me see. Okay, just hang tight, hang tight. There you go. Oh, yes. Look at her. Oh, she's massive. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm going to get a, a Lindy glove so I can go inside their mouth. I need to, she's got that thing in there big time. She was not coming unglued. Oh, she's huge. This is 54 inches. Oh, come on, man. Oh. She's 
she ain't liking this at all. Oh, she's so big. Let me get my extractors. Oh. oh. You want to see her? Oh, yes. <sighs> <laughs> there you go guys oh absolutely a monster fish <laughs> this is what we came here for boss i hear you <laughs> <laughs> this is it let's get her back oh 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 man how am I going to measure the length on this fish? Oh. Okay. Over here, girl. Fifty-three guys. Look at her. Fifty-three inches. Come on, baby. Oh, she's good. She's good. She's gonna be fine. Look at her. Look at those gills flare. This is what musky fishing's all about, right here. What a head. Letting those giants go. There she goes. Thank you, sweetheart. Fifty-three inches. So there it is, folks. You can see we took advantage of some of the elements that we talked about on here. We had forage in place. Our lake classification that we were fishing is basically a mesiotropic, not quite a late, late, late mesiotropic, but a mesiotropic lake. The depth, 99% of the time you're going to find me when I'm fishing muskies is going to be shallow. Other species, yeah, I'll dig down in there. But for muskies, I want that fish up in the column. 99% of the time where we're fishing these fish, they're not in the warmest part of their life cycle. It's just not there. They're always seeking a little bit warmer water than what Mother Nature's given them. Structural elements, we showed it to you in the underwater, folks. We had weeds, we had muck, we had rock, we had everything going on in there. This particular place that we were fishing was a small inside turn on an island cluster. So yes, we had the cluster element going as well. Fishing pressure, well, let's be honest about it. You didn't see anybody in the shop, but that doesn't mean people don't fish there. Our barometric pressure, we showed it to you on the angling edge. We were at a falling barometer even though it was high by today's standards, by our standards anyway. In the lake size, well, we were on a body of water that was humongous, so therefore that works. Preferred water temp, way warmer than what we had. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. We're going to continue with the classroom setting stuff as we move forward going into the future. We've got a lot of things to learn, a lot of things to teach about the various types of fishing that are on there. All right, with that being said, remember now, you can interact with the show, folks. I want you folks to pay attention to this. You can go on Facebook, Fishing Sticks TV. You can private message us, and we will try to answer those questions for you. Um, you can also email us during the show, and if you pre-register your phone number, we can take your phone call, just like we took Kathy's. That being said, I want to say one more time, folks, that my hat is off to Kathy. She is an absolute miracle worker to be working with that group, pioneering what's going on over there. I just can't say enough. She's a superwoman, and we need more superwomen in the fishing world. It is what it is. Uh, I've got somebody that just chimed in here on us. Um, let's see here. Please read this. I'm not uh, joking. Let's see here. I'm going to have to look at it after we're on. It's too small a text for me to see. So I will post it for you if it warrants being posted. And uh, we will go from there. That being said, um, we're always looking for some sponsor support on the show. It's young. It's new. We're trying to get people involved. Uh, if you're a guide out there, if you're a lure manufacturer, a product manufacturer, you have anything that has to do with fishing or hunting, we're going to be going into hunting shows as we go forward. 
But that being said, it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to support us, and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg to be part of what we're doing, and we will see to it that your brand is acknowledged. I mean, let's face it, I fresh from nothing but Jim Grant rods. Jim Grant stepped up, and he brought the rods to us, and I'm telling you, it's an awesome piece of his equipment, no doubt about it. Some of the lodges that we shoot, Athabasca, you want to catch big pike? I'm telling you, big pike are there, and hey, how many times have you been to a lake where you've broken the world record on lake trout twice? Well, I have it at the Basca. And we can't, you can never say enough about Osborne Bay Eagle Lake. It has got muskies, it has got smallmouth, and it's got walleyes. We're going to be having Randy come on later on in the show, and we're going to be talking about some of the walleye fishing that's going on in Osborne Bay of Eagle Lake. And Rich and Kay are just, are just off the charts great people. And then we got Stephen Gale. Stephen Gale over at uh, over at Witch Bay Camp. I caught my 100th, like our commercial says, at Witch Bay. I have caught so many big fish out of the shores of Witch Bay Camp. It's unbelievable. I, and again, we're going to be going into some walleye fishing that's going on there. I had an opportunity to fish with Dick there, and we were bottom bouncing. It was something I had never done before. I learned an awful lot from the young man, and we're going to be bringing that forward as we go through it. Uh, I just can't say enough. Um, how about big, and I'm talking about really big northern pike? Well, you do it up in Alaska on the midnight sun. And we're going to get Wade Alexander on here or Greg or one of those people, Greg Beefus, one of those people up there. We're going to get them on from time to time and get an update of what's going on up there. And I'm certain they're going to have some beautiful pictures coming our way, maybe even some video coming our way from the midnight sun. So with all that being said, folks, I want you to do me one favor. Just sit back in your easy chair and just look at this because this is what it's all about. Imagine this. This is where fishing is. I have fished in a high caliber environment for 35 years. This gives me an opportunity to slow down, have some fun, meet some people, teach some people something and learn and learn myself from others that are out there. With that being said, God bless. And I wish to see you here next week on Fishing Sticks TV on Facebook as we stream live. That being said, I'm Bob Mesacomer for all that makes it happen. My brother Mike was in studio tonight making sure that we pulled this thing off. You know, he might have been the one that, uh, that, uh, that you know, knocked the plug out. You never know. Hey, that being said, we'll see you folks next week for more of this great fishing world out there that we have. Most of it's untapped. God bless. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.